Research into the ills of vaping continued to turn up alarming information. In Singapore, those as young as 12 years old have been found with vapes on them. Sabrina Ng takes a closer look at just how harmful the illegal habit can be. These e-vaporizers were found in a warehouse raid early last year. With flavours like watermelon, cotton candy and grape, they may seem attractive to many, especially the young. But how many know what they're breathing in with each inhale? This is an e-cigarette or a vape. And some of the chemicals contained within this vape include nicotine, cancer-causing agents like formaldehyde and metal nanoparticles such as tin, lead or nickel. Nicotine is an addictive substance that can lead to overconsumption and even nicotine poisoning. It can also lead to mood disorders and decreased attention spans in those who are younger. Other cancer-causing agents such as formaldehyde can also lead to infertility issues. One doctor says vaping can lead to more drastic health outcomes for the young. Teenagers' lungs are still developing, so vaping, of course, may introduce these toxic chemicals that interfere with lung growth and function. And of course, teenagers are more sensitive to addictive effects uh, of vaping, so eventual quitting may be more difficult to them compared to adults. According to the Health Sciences Authority, there were over 800 repeat offenders under 18 years old between 2019 to 2023. They bought, used or were in possession of a vape. Another possible consequence of vaping for both teens and adults is a condition called bronchiolitis obliterans. A chemical commonly found in e-cigarettes called diastole could be one cause of this condition. Diastole is commonly added into vape liquids by companies to complement these flavourings. When inhaled, it can cause the tiny insects in your lungs to scar. Over time, the scarring builds up and this leads to a narrowing of the airway, which can lead to coughing, wheezing or even respiratory failure. The condition can be treated but not cured. Some kinds of treatments that have been used include things like immunosuppressants and steroids and oxygen therapy, but actually the actual cure for it is a lung transplant and even with a lung transplant, uh, it doesn't guarantee survival beyond five years. Dr. Lowe debunked the belief that vaping is a healthier alternative to smoking cigarettes. She adds that despite e-vaporizers being a relatively new product, its harms are already well documented. For a deeper dive into this issue, I'm joined by Ed Jung, Associate Professor Pua Sahan, Head and Senior Consultant at the Department of Respiratory and Critical Care Medicine at Tan Tok Seng Hospital. Thanks for joining me today. Now, why is there a prevalence of vaping among uh, young adults in Singapore, despite a national ban and it being uh, illegal and the strict restrictions? Yeah, I think you brought a good point. It's quite strange, despite our strong stance against vaping, yet we still, on the ground sensing, quite a number of people are still vaping. Mm -hmm. I think it's just because of how industry has come in and you know, made it a very curious thing for people to try out. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, they added a very addictive chemical within the vape itself, mm -hmm. getting you hooked and getting you craving for it ever, ever. What's that addictive? Nico nicotine. It's nicotine, right, yeah. which is found in, in cigarettes. In cigarettes, that's right. right. Um, the perception that vaping is less evil, I suppose, uh, smoking. That's a problem, isn't it? It is, it is. So uh, it is, oh, it, uh, so for the medical fraternity doesn't uh, endorse this at all. It is definitely just as bad as smoking. Mm -hmm. You are inhaling cancer-causing agents. You're inhaling agents that can cause lung damage in the long term. Uh, nicotine is, is just as addictive. In fact, it's even more addictive than heroin and cocaine. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really um, inhaling smoke that destroys your lung. And a lot of times uh, we are getting worried because younger people are vaping now. Right. And, you know, they have got uh, many years ahead. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we are worried about is that they become our patients in the future. Right. I mean, going back to this perception because it's, it's less evil, one, I suppose, is also the question of debunking myths, right? Mm. One of the myths that uh, we're familiar with is that secondhand vapor of a myth is not you know, as disruptive as secondhand smoke. Can you, can you debunk some of these ideas? Yeah, so I think uh, whatever smoke that's inhaled in the lungs is blown out as well. Mm -hmm. So all these particles that are uh, not absorbed into the smoker's lung right. go, go, goes all around the mm -hmm. environment. Mm -hmm. There's this thing called third-hand smoke as well. And there's mm -hmm. a lot of uh, 
discussions now on how some of the particles actually land on clothing and the environment mm. and people can just take it up and inhale it into themselves. Right. So things stick on and it doesn't just stay with the vapour. Correct. Mm. And also, it's less evil because they, they think that it doesn't affect bystanders like yeah. children or pregnant women. That's not true, is That's it? That's not true at all. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, it's actually harmful to everybody around you. So it's similar to cigarette smoking, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's uh, all the bystanders, you, you, you know, people think that it's just my body, I'm, I'm taking it in, mm -hmm. but they don't realise that it's actually affecting other people, their loved ones, their friends. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, actually the environment as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, for those who want to quit, mm -hmm. but find it a struggle, like you said, it's so addictive, what would be your advice? Okay, so it uh, helps all around. I think uh, one of it is by the Help Promotion Board. The I Quit program is helpful. It's free. Uh, many various ways of doing it. And all the hospitals, the polyclinics, uh, they, they are, there are people out there ready to help. Mm -hmm. uh, in the national health group, at least, we, we know uh, you can just walk in, can ask for a uh, sick consultation, and somebody will, will guide you through the process, mm -hmm. and including giving you medications if it's required, to replace whatever nicotine addiction that you really have to, be, to, to stem the withdrawal symptoms. Mm -hmm. yeah. Medication, are you talking about nicotine patches like traditional, yeah. like you right. know, anti-smoking help? Okay. That's right, yeah. It's really to, to, to reduce the craving. And I think what happens is that once nicotine hits you, you keep wanting more and more. Mm. And, and yeah, as, as it escalates, uh, the withdrawal symptoms actually come a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. What are some of the, I suppose, serious health risks associated with vaping? Yeah, so I think uh, there's a lot of evidence these days. I think uh, it was shown earlier on that you can actually get this bronchospasm where your lungs just constrict down. You feel difficulty in breathing. There's a, if you have underlying lung disease like asthma or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or smoker's lung disease, it can exacerbate this. Uh, some patients actually develop something very severe called e-cigarettes or vape users associated lung injury. Yeah. Uh, they come in in respiratory failure, they come into the ICUs, they need all sorts of oxygen supplementation, they get intubated, they put on a life support machine, and people have died from this. Mm -hmm. And it's all for a frivolous en enjoyment. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really sad to see. Right. In, in the report that we heard earlier, I mean, one of the you know, things that stood out was like kids as young as 12 have yeah. been caught with vape. I mean, personally for you, what's most disturbing to you about you know, uh, people, more and more people picking up this habit? I think it's just still the misconception that it's actually safe. Yeah. yeah, and uh, what they don't know is especially the young, uh, the young children that are still growing, mm -hmm. they're still developing, their lungs are growing, their brain are growing, but all the chemicals that they inhale through the vapes actually stuns them, in fact, actually makes them even more diseased. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have long-term effects yet, but however, the, the evidence is quite strong. Mm -hmm. Cancers are very, very, po a big potential, mm -hmm. and also chronic lung diseases as well. Right. Yeah. All right. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Thanks very for much. those thoughts. Yes. And that was Adjunct Associate Prof. Pua Sehon from the Department of Respiratory and Critical Medicine at Tan Tok Seng Hospital.